Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Who is there? Who is in the house? Who is here on Thursday? For those of you who are wondering, I am running late. 7.43. Hey, Savannah. I was like this close. I was like, I'm going to be on time. It's going to be 7.30. I was this close. 7.43. So I'm running a little bit behind, but as I'm working on honoring my commitment to coming on here, hey, Auntie Beverly, um, forgive me <laughs> for the few minutes shy of 7.30. So I am on call. So if my phone goes off, I'm probably going to cut my talk short. Um, I'm probably going to talk short tonight anyways, but I just wanted you to know that. So hi, guys. Who's there? It is a little bit after 7.30, and I am Dr. Teresa Wright. I'm looking around like, like you guys are here with me. No, you're not. <laughs> so it's Dr. Teresa Wright. I am a family physician and a certified health coach, and I am in the process of helping overwhelmed and overextended individuals transform their lives while I do the same for mine. And so I just wanted to pop on and say hi to you guys, give you some tips, um, some things I've been thinking about, and let's just have a conversation. Maybe you guys have some great tips for Thanksgiving, and I may have one or two that may be helpful, so I just wanted to come on and, and have that conversation. Hey, Judy. So again, as a form of introduction, I am Dr. Teresa Wright. I'm a family physician. I'm also a certified health coach and I help overwhelmed, overextended individuals um, to transform their lives and choose themselves like never before. And I am here to give you all three Thanksgiving tips just in time for the holidays. So um, if you have a tip for Thanksgiving, whether it's a meal tip or a tip for that day, post it below because who can't use a little Thanksgiving magic to help them get through it, uh, the holidays, honestly. So um, just for a point of note, my first tip is to exercise. Yes, I said it. I said the E word, exercise. And um, why would I say that? Well, if you are committing to having a great Thanksgiving, um, it may benefit you to um, get up early and get your workout in on the front half of the day. Um, just so that you don't wind up throwing the exercise completely out. Because if you are like some families, after eating, there's more eating. And then there's socializing and talking. And then you're full and you're a little drowsy. It's really hard to get your exercise in at the end of the day on Thanksgiving. Um, and the thing about getting to exercise in early, ex <laughs> exercise is the devil, you're funny. So let's change what I said. No, but you're right. Like who, who doesn't feel that way? Um, you're talking to someone who has struggled with that word. Hey, Dr. Lamont, you are talking to someone who has struggled with the word exercise for many years, Savannah. <laughs> so um, I understand. So let's change that word. Let's call it movement. So, first tip is to get up and move for 30 minutes before the big feast. So we're not calling it exercise event, we're calling it movement. So what does movement look like? Tell me what your movement looks like. You know, it could be jumping around the house with your little ones or your younger family members. It could be dancing, which is always great for me. Um, some people use a jump rope and skip. You know, if you have other physical things you could do that count as movement, if you do them for 30 minutes that day, and if you get your heart rate up to an appropriate level, it will count as movement. So whatever you wind up doing, whether you wanna call it exercise or movement or anything else, if you commit to doing that on the day of, you're going to set yourself up to have a successful afternoon because then you'll have um, less of a guilt ridden afternoon if you're trying to indulge a little bit. And so if you're on a health journey, um, I don't call it diet or anything like that because I think it is a health journey. Taking an early morning walk, that's correct. 
A walk is a good form of movement. And so if you're on a health journey like I am, um, committing to getting your movement in early will help you to um, stave off some of the feelings of guilt and angst and um, stress about having a little bit more indulgence during the day. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, choose what you put on your plate wisely. Now, I am not the food police. Hey, Dr. Delicia, I am not the food police. I am not gonna check your plate and tell you you did it wrong because it's Thanksgiving. Who cares, right? I want you to enjoy what you're having. But what, when I said choose wisely, what do I mean by that? If you know you're going to multiple houses and you know that grandma makes the best macaroni casserole, maybe you wanna have your carbs at grandma's house. Maybe you wanna have her macaroni casserole that day. And maybe you won't have macaroni casserole at someone else's house because it's just not as good as grandma's. What I'm saying is, why waste the carbs? If it's not that good, if you already know from past experience that you like somebody's pecan pie better or whatever the, the thing is that you're gonna indulge in, just have that um, from that person. You don't necessarily have to have everybody's macaroni casserole that day. You honestly don't have to have everybody's mac, um, potato salad or everybody's bread or cornbread. Um, choose your carb wisely. Now, if you wanna have vegetables and greens and that kind of stuff, unless you have some restriction in your diet that your doctors told you about, like a low salt diet or anything like that, have fun with that, you know, pick your proteins and enjoy them. But when it comes to what you put on your plate in terms of carbs, you don't have to have everybody's carbs. Enjoy what you like, and if you don't like it, don't eat it. And so let's say you don't know any better because you've never been to so-and-so's house and you don't know how their macaroni casserole is and you taste it and you don't necessarily like it. Don't feel that you have to complete the portion you have in front of you. You know, politely pass it on and have something else. Enjoy the day. Don't force something that's not fitting into your healthful plan. Um, but enjoy the things you want to enjoy. And make good choices so that you don't um, have to feel the feelings of... Um, regret or stress or anything afterwards so make it a good day and um, if you have any questions about what should be on your plate because you have special diet recommended by your doctor this is the time to give them a call and run some ideas by them um, low salt and things like that so that's tip number two choose what you put on your plate wisely and again I am NOT the plate police I will not be checking your plates but if it ain't good spit it out and try something else <laughs> So well, that's tip number two. <laughs> Did that make sense? Right? I learned that a while ago. Um, I went, where did I go? I went to some event. Um, it was like a social gathering somewhere. And you know, they have the, the waiters that come around with the different foods that you could try. And I tried some hors d'oeuvres. And I, you, know, you know how you grab a bunch of things. And I tried something, I really did not like it. I mean, I was like, hmm, I'm not gonna do this. I thought to myself, I am not gonna waste calories on this. I don't like this. So I passed it off and I actually got a few of the things that I actually enjoyed. And you know, uh, I always recommend that you do that. I tell my patients that, hey, Dr. Donna, same with like buffets. If you go somewhere and you're not sure, taste everything that you wanna taste. And if it's not good, don't waste your time, don't waste your energy, and definitely don't waste your calories and carbs on that. Get something you actually want. So that's tip number two. Tip number three, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. See, my fingers are weird, so that's why. <laughs> so, hey, Dr. Shruti. So hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. I know it's a day of indulgence, and we want you to indulge in a way that's safe and healthy and happy. But you also want to hydrate. The good thing about hydrating is that you will feel well rested because hydration is um, significantly linked with fatigue. So if you're hydrating all day in anticipation of a feast or in anticipation of having a good meal, you're gonna feel well rested when you get around the family and the emotions are running high and there's a lot going on. So that's one, t one thing. Your skin's gonna be nice and glowing and dewy and who doesn't want that on a, a day that's gonna be filled with pictures and hugs and kisses and family. Of course you want that. And then you're gonna be eating a lot of rich foods, creamy foods, salty foods, sugary foods. And so high, being well hydrated will stave off any, hey Tamaju, any headaches or any um, other symptoms that come with um, eating rich foods and not having the hydration. 
you know sometimes your skin gets dry and dull your body gets achy you may have some buildup of infl inflammatory things in your um, joints your joints may hurt um, yeah definitely thank you dr. Donna um, so um, you may your electrolytes may be out of balance if you hadn't been hydrating and you're indulging in rich and salty and sugary foods your electrolytes and things could be out of balance and so hydrating appropriately will help keep some of those symptoms of feeling sluggish at bay and this is a pro tip that no one ever wants to talk about because it's, it's kind of like your bowels so who wants to talk about bowels on Thanksgiving but when you hydrate appropriately once you've had all your fill and it's time to go home um, your, your bowels will move better let me say that softer your bowels will move better don't tell anybody I told you that but that's a pro tip hydrate 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 and you will have much easier time moving everything out and starting your <laughs> the following day off on the right foot uh, and if you indulge in alcohol at all if you do choose to do that having good food in your belly and good hydration will help to dilute some of that so um, you're less likely to have some of those side effects of feeling um, hungover and ill and of course I don't advocate that you ever drink to the point of feeling hungover and ill but um, if you're hydrating you're less likely to have that anyways regardless of how you twist it so just three wonderful tips from your local favorite health coach and primary doctor on how to have a good Thanksgiving and I always give a bonus tip if I think about it bonus tip if you're traveling wear your seatbelt I don't care what the the um, what everyone else says about seatbelts I heard someone making comments early in the week about their feelings about seatbelts and safety wear your seatbelts if you're traveling it is a much better way to go into the holidays if you are wearing a seatbelt God forbid you know if something were to happen at least you would be um, better protected so some tips from me to you I'm gonna follow all of them on the on the years that I do these tips I am much better off for it and on the years when I don't follow these tips I'm worse for the wear and so yes safety first Dr. Donna thank you all for hanging out with me I am so blessed the phone didn't go off we didn't have any calls and so we got to go through this whole talk without any complications or problems so that was good yay seat belts do save lives Dr. Donna you are awesome thank you for interacting with me you guys have a blessed evening if you have any tips or any tricks that help you get through the holidays please pass them down here for my friends and remember sharing is caring so tell all your friends pass this message along we can help each other and let's have a blessed and happy thanksgiving dr shruti thank you and again i am dr teresa wright i am a family physician i'm a certified health coach and i help overwhelmed overextended individuals to choose themselves first and if you have any questions for me just follow me on all social media and post your questions below good night